Greetings, this is Big Brother. Um, sorry about not putting out a video a couple days. I've been really busy. Family members and eBay's keeping me quite busy. So I'm going to put out a what's sold here and uh, run down some things I've sold in the past couple weeks. Um, okay, we're going to start off with a, a vintage Tonesco salt and pepper shakers. Originally asked $40 for them. Somebody shot me a price of 30 bucks. And I took it. Uh, Inesco is really hot for me right now, especially when they're in uh, almost perfect condition, which these are. Um, if you guys see these out there, these particular salt and pepper shakers are worth uh, more than others. So, yeah, yeah, you want them looking good. If you can, if you can't, you can uh, you won't get as much, but you can still get 10 to 15 bucks off of these particular Inesco salt and pepper shakers. Yep, there you go. Uh, next, I have a bunch of these. All they are is bottle toppers. Uh, you put the little necks, the holes there around the uh, neck of the bottle and cap them off. Uh, those of you that are of age uh, would remember these. I definitely remember them because I am of age. Yeah, I've got a, a whole bunch of these. I bought an entire bag of, I don't know, I think 60, 70 of them for a dollar. And I'm selling them off. I put them in lots of six uh, or six pack. I think back in the day they came in eight. Um, Selling them off for twelve ninety five a shot. Uh, this is the first batch of six that I've sold. Uh, I'll sell a batch of these, a batch being the six. Uh, maybe I'll sell one batch every two to three months. But, you know, sold one, made more than my money back, and have plenty more to go. Easy list, easy don't take up any space so you know uh, here's my uh, what I would like to refer to as my spe specialty uh, dollhouse miniatures uh, you're gonna see if you ever see my wet sold you're gonna see me selling a lot of this stuff uh, they're easy to ship they're easy to identify uh, yeah I just take a bunch of them like there's a violin, there's some uh, sets, some of them are in bags, some of them are handmade, uh, various sizes and materials. Uh, here's a uh, violin, box of wood, you know, just a mixed bag of stuff. I just threw it out there, didn't want to deal with identifying each and every little piece. There might be some breadwinners in there, there might not. Uh, this blue, this yellow handled blue sweeper back there, that is an ideal piece which is a, a name you need to know and so is this picture and it still has its sticky stuff on the back uh, the line going through it there is uh, just a shadow there's nothing wrong with it but uh, yeah those are from ideal which uh, places them in the 50s to 60s range and the big suitcase there on the end that's from a uh, uh, I think that's a Barbie thing. So, you know, I, I got all different kinds of stuff in here. Uh, I see people selling just the bird cage on its own for like seven bucks. I just threw it in there. I didn't, like I said, I didn't care. Yeah, see, it says ideal on it. Mm, there, there's a bowling, bowling ball and ten pins there in the back, which... You can find each and every individual piece if you wanted to go that route. I tried that route. Certain pieces I'll sell like that. But, uh, yeah, I just didn't want to deal with it. I had a huge, huge, huge bag. I did separate these. This is a fruit crate set. So you got flour and sugar and what looks like moldy peaches. Uh, some corn and potatoes. Flour, you know, just just this little set. Um, there's ten pieces total in there. Sold them for full price, fourteen ninety five. Okay.
Okay, here's one I want to call to your attention. This is uh, parts. I sell a lot of parts. I sell the whole thing as parts only, which means uh, I'm a top rated seller, but I take off my top rating for this because after two weeks you can't return it. Um, if you have, if you're one of those people that doesn't accept returns, which I wouldn't know why that is, um, not in this day and age, but uh, <clears throat> if you uh, don't accept returns, you still have to accept returns from uh, two weeks into a sale regardless of what you think. That is in the I agree part that you signed on for eBay. Anyway, this is a Tonka from the uh, 50s or 60s. Uh, this particular color of Jeep is uh, a little harder to find than the others. Uh, I mean, you can still see it out there. But if they're grimy, gunky, all that stuff, it still could be worth money. I sold it for 10 bucks. I didn't want to deal with it. I bought a whole flat of junky looking Tonkas for a dollar. Sold this one for 10 so I got my money back. I've also sold some others, which I'll show you in the back. Um, one thing about Tonkas, to date a Tonka, if you look at the tabs, uh, you're going to have to do your own uh, kind of research and watch some videos and stuff on how to date that. But uh, more than likely, this got bought by some other eBayer who's going to strip it down and sell each individual part. You know, you can get 10 bucks for just the wheels or the headlights there, which are not broken. As you can see, they're just a little dirty. There's ways to clean them up. Um, you can sell just the headlamps for like 7 to 10 bucks. So this might be... And, or somebody might actually be restoring it, which is my hope, but eh, I sold it. Uh, another lot of dollhouse miniatures. I had $20 best offer. They go down price of $16.95, which is a weird number to shoot me, but you know, whatever. Just another mixed bag of stuff. A little teddy bear, a little recipe box. There's a dollhouse that actually goes in a dollhouse, which is weird. There's some handmade things. There's a handmade teddy bear back there. Uh, yeah, so, oh, and there's a, that green thing with the wire, that's a Christmas tree light, so you can light up your Christmas tree in your dollhouse. Um, there's a, uh, drop leaf gate leg table. It's called a gate leg table because the legs here fold out like they would. Where's my stupid picture tab? Do, 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 do. Yeah, there we go. You can see they swing out like they would in a in a gate. That's why they're called gate leg tables. And since the sides drop down, it's called drop leaf. And it's just a miniature of what the real thing would be. The real thing's called a gate leg drop leaf. So that's what you call the miniature. I sold this one piece of furniture for 15 bucks. There's plenty of them up there. People are asking ridiculous prices, like 50 and 60 bucks, and there's none of those on the sold. I know better. I've been selling this stuff for a long time. Here's uh, more dollhouse miniatures. These are all handmade. Uh, handmade doll stuff does very well for me. Uh, when I put all these together, they uh, didn't cost more than say uh i don't know uh it was in with all the other miniatures you've seen me sold anyway i separated them uh there's some handmade uh cookies and stuff like that in there uh let me show you real quickly uh yeah there's a little handmade wreath and uh ornament and there's some christmas cookies with the roller all these uh purple and blue things that you see are tinsel each one of them is marked two yards, so there's enough there to do a real tree almost, I think. But yeah, that's tinsel for your. And there's some little gingerbread cookies, um, a bunch of other cookies. 
So yeah, um, I put this up there for 25 bucks at best offer because uh, these are specialty pieces. They're handmade, and they're Christmas. People want to do their doll's house up just as much as they want to do their real house. Um, here, these are demo discs that I got out of a computer gaming world, which was a subscription that I did a long time ago in the 2000s. Uh, these have been following me around forever. Uh, I found them while cleaning out my room, rearranging stuff for uh, the big sales that we're going to get. I know we're going to get them. Um, yeah, they're just demos. And they're not going to work for me. Okay. Yeah, so Freedom Fighters Home World 2004. They're all from 2003. Uh. Jedi Knight, Jedi Knight, Jedi Knight, here, and they're advertising Earthlink, ha ha ha, and this one's got Command and Conquer Generals, which I wound up buying, I like those kinds of games, anyway, I, I got rid of them, 8 bucks, yeah, here's uh, more Tonkas, this was also in the flat, like that uh, Tonka Jeep, this is for parts or repair only, so they got two weeks to return it if they want them. But this first one up here is kind of ratty looking, while the other one is, is in much better shape. Nice clean windows. That's something you want to look for. Uh, not a whole lot of paint chipping, and the wheels were in decent shape. Uh, this one back here is the same year, the exact same model, everything. I just sold them both because I didn't, I know that one back there wouldn't sell on its own, so I threw that one in there with it. I asked 15 bucks, I got 15 bucks. Um, so, what, that's 25 bucks for something I paid a dollar for? Here is uh, two pounds of shiny rocks. Uh, these have been up there for mm, four months. They finally sold. I had them up there for 20 bucks. Somebody said 15. I said, okay, I took it. Pretty rocks, polished rocks. You know, if this is something you do as a hobby, you can sell this stuff. This was in a, uh, this was in with the uh, Tonka Toys. Had to do a little research to see what it was. I mean, I know it's an engine. I know it's a HO scale because I used to have some. But you, you see it's really dirty, really dusty, crappy looking. Took it apart, took pictures of it. Got a broken rail in the front. But the uh, all the parts were there. At least I hope they were there. Uh, there's a few listings of this particular engine. This is made in Yugoslavia, by the way. Uh, this particular engine uh, in good working order is 40 to $50 on its own. But, you know, parts are repair because, you know, somebody might want to uh, go out there. If you sell these parts of repair, make sure that these little end pieces here are on them. Otherwise, people have no interest in them. They got to be able to hook up with the cars. And next is. Uh, one of my vintage alarm clocks. Uh, this is a uh, Lux Robert Shaw. They look a lot like the Bradleys, but the uh, Robert Shaws can do better. This particular one is not, it's more common than the others. And uh, red, red is a pretty common color. So if you come across a different color than red, it's probably worth more. If you come across something that doesn't have the eagle on, it's probably worth more. Anyway, I've got a video description of this thing because it, do, it does say work tested and working. I took a video description. People can hear it tick. They can see the alarm clock. Uh, so, you know, if, if they don't like it and they want to return it and say it doesn't work, well, I got proof otherwise. This is something I have come across. And people want to see the stuff working before they buy it. Uh, again, uh, at a different auction, uh, the one where I did the uh, interview with 
different auction here. Uh, I bought a whole flat of these uh, handmade pottery things. Uh, I paid eight bucks for ten of them. I'm selling them. I'm selling them off at uh, ten to fifteen bucks each. This room was uh, really nice and unique. It had some neat indentations and stuff. I almost kept this one, honestly. It's nice and tall. Take pictures inside. It's glazed on the inside, so it might be ready for food use. I don't know. <laughs> um. Yep. So there it is. Uh, sell that. I sold that one thing off. Made all the money back on all the others. Anything thereafter is money in my pocket. Uh, I've had this laying around for I don't know, probably four or five months. Uh, it finally sold. There's a few of them up there. Mine sold, but it's a crystal pig sitting in a, uh, a gold-plated. Uh, let's see, gold pewter. It's uh, well marked. You really don't need Google Lens or anything, but it's, as you can see, it says exactly what it is. It's marks and all that other stuff. It says it's pewter. It doesn't say anything about gold plating, so I don't put that in there. But uh, yeah, it sold for uh, twenty dollars, not twenty-five as it states. And I took a twenty-dollar offer. Uh, the thing is, maybe an inch long. <laughs> It didn't weigh an ounce. I know that much. Uh, here's some more. Uh, this isn't Taka. This is Tootsie. Uh, it was in the Tonka flat. So here's something else I get to add to it. It makes a total $35 off a $1 box. But these are quite common. Um, there's a lot of these for sale. I think the only difference is, is my cab here is in really great shape. Uh, a lot of the others I've seen are, uh, you know, they're they're missing paint and stuff like that. I've got some flea biting going along. Flea biting is a term that you need to use in your listings if you have, if you're dealing with die cast stuff. Uh, let's see. Yep. So sold that ten bucks. Here we go. 1914. This one is unique. Uh, I probably could have got a hundred bucks for this thing if I was willing to wait, but I wasn't. Uh, I got five bucks into that. I sold it for 55. I had it up there for 75 or best offer uh, within a day. I got several offers, uh, you know, really, really stupid ones. I did a little research on this. I had to do research on this to figure out even what the hell it was. Um, yeah, so the shapes of those bells makes this unique. Not the item itself. Uh, it's a telephone ringer. A telephone would be off to the side. Wires would be going to this. And when somebody calls, that would ring to let you know to pick up the phone. And that's how it was back in the day or out in the rural parts and stuff. Anyway, like I said... Uh, it's well-named box. Uh, it's marked. Uh, you know, look at the dovetail. Those those are nice. This is a handcrafted box. It's got the original maker's mark. Look at those screws. You know it's old. Uh, inside, patent applied. So you know it's USA all the way. And right here it says nine. May 12th, 1914. So that's what I dated it as. Anyway, uh, I got a decent offer for 55 bucks. I wasn't willing to sit on it for a long time. I wanted to get it out the door so I could have some money to go to another auction. Not that I don't have the money, I do. I, I just wanted to move it. I wanted to get it out of here. It happened to fit into a medium flat rate. I prepackaged it. Uh, set it up. Uh, it went international. Uh, it's going to France, I think. Uh, guy sent me uh, pictures on how to box stuff, so apparently he's had bad luck before, but I reassured him I don't do that. Uh, you guys saw me. Uh, I said I was going to, I bought a whole bunch of die casts just for this piece. 
Um, yeah, this is North Scott. If you see that name out there, you'll want to look them up. The dealer trucks, they come in different colors, I think white, red, and black. Um, you'll want them. You can get good money from them. I had 25 bucks or best offer. I took a $20 offer. I took, I was receiving a lot of offers in front of that for like five bucks, 10 bucks. No, uh -uh. no, I, I know what I got. You're not going to play those games with me. Plain and simple. Uh, okay. I'd say this is a bolo, but for you guys to come across this is, is a once in a blue moon thing because it's once in a blue moon for me. Uh, at the end of World War II, you know, when Germany was giving back his stuff, Russia came in, took some, uh, took a big chunk of land, and it was theirs for a couple years. This was made in that part of Germany, Russian occupied Germany. The only way I know is that, that one sticker. If I were to pick this piece up normally, I wouldn't know. Actually, I would know because. I've dealt with it a few times, and uh, the question would run across my mind if this was that particular thing. But, uh, yeah, this is in a horrible shape. Uh, it has the music on it. It says Still Knocked, which is Silent Night. It's missing the keyboard. It's really bent right here. It's thin. I don't have the bench for it. Uh... Yeah, there's a better shape of the bend. Uh, but it is an extremely rare piece. But because of the damage, I could only get 15 bucks for it. But the thing fit in a, in a four square box, which is a, a box that I use a lot when I ship things four by four by four. I've been using them for years, along with the 864s and the 884s. And, you know, that's not a new revelation. Oh, my God, everything fits in the 864. Yeah, I've been using it for a while. Um, here's another mug off that hand. Uh, yeah, they're handmade pottery pieces, studio art. Uh, they might have been done uh, as a college final or uh, somebody did them. And, you know, they're all signed. I said, uh, can't decipher the language. If I can't decipher it, I'm not going to sit there and spend all day trying to do it. Um yeah, I just had to, re I just got a return on this. Uh, $10 shipping, $10 uh, for the item. Uh, I had 15 or best offer. They said 10 I said, sure, it went international. They paid a total of uh, over 30 bucks, but I'm only into it for the 20 and that's all I had to uh, return. They actually sent me pictures of a crack that I apparently missed. It's a hairline fracture mark. It's straight as hell. I'm sure it's not a somebody broke it crack. I'm sure it's in the piece itself. I just plain and simple missed it. So I gave him a return. Uh, here is, uh, if any of you guys watched me while I was on the um, Beardo show, I uh, this was in the big quiz. What is it? I finally decided to sell it. Let it go, get some money for Christmas, you know, buy some stuff for people. This is a Type A Model 1 Chick Repeating Razor. This is the first uh, thing that Chick produced. Uh, you pull out the back. What they want, what the collectors want to know is all the parts there. And it's just really those two pieces that you have to worry about. Um, it did work. I tested it. I put in there, uh, item works pre-owned, uh, works no cap, handle is ox oxidized, plunge is extremely stiff, it is, and it needs a good cleaning. Uh, this went to Australia. I had 125 or best offer, just bought it outright. So, uh, some of the sold comps were around... Uh, e. This is becoming an extremely difficult piece to find. 
you know, as, as time goes on, all this older stuff becomes harder and harder to find because who knows what happens to them. And, uh, yeah. So, I don't know. I think my original uh, cost on this was uh, 10 bucks. Somebody missed it at an auction, and I didn't. Do uh, just some books that I've gotten along the way. Somebody, fast food figures. I was holding on to it. Look through it. I've got a bigger book now, so I decided to sell this one, which I use for reference. Uh, any of the books uh, that I come across at auction that have things like, you know, for dolls and figures and stuff, I keep. I use for reference. It's a good thing. You get them cheap usually. Uh, had it 15 bucks at best offer. Somebody shot me a price of nine, and I took it because I, I might have a quarter into it. Who knows? Uh, here's a. And I'm still selling off of that $4 ephemera box that I got. Uh, I got full asking price of 15 bucks. It's just an old uh, 70s radio repair book. It's very small. It's not in great shape. But, uh, yeah, you know. There. Uh, don't don't underestimate ephemera. Even, even old ephemera it makes it better. Uh, I just sold this a few, you know, last week. Yeah, I think it was last week. Um, yeah, it was from that Fruit Crate Ends haul that I got at the estate auction. Uh, I put this one up immediately because I want it sold before Halloween. And it sold within two days. I got full asking price of $13.95. Uh, why did I price it like that? Well, first of all, you know, it's a specialty. I probably could have got more. Uh, I just didn't feel like it. I, I got enough of them. You know, if I sell them all for like three bucks a piece, I'm still going to make money on everything. So over there, $13.95. I wanted it out before Halloween. And that's why I priced it that way. And last but definitely not least, I've shipped some things off this morning. Um, these are Royal Copley. Uh, those of you that watch some of the bigger YouTube might recognize that uh, name. Uh, they're not marked, but I know Royal Copley. I know. I, I just know things. I've been doing it long enough. Uh, got the Royal Copley kick ends. Oh, excuse me. Uh, they are. They are a bit crazed. There is crazing. You see any of those lines going across there? That is crazing. Uh, I had 50 bucks or best offer. Somebody shot me a price of 40 bucks. Took it. Um, I shipped those out this morning. I'm trying to find box for the other things. <coughs> I've shipped those Monday. Okay, so yeah, that's that's everything I've sold in the uh, I don't know last month. I guess it's it's been less than a month honestly uh sales are going through the roof i'm listing like 20 things a day minimum i i don't have a lot of multiple quantity things left so and everything i sell is a little different than each other like i got a, a Marilyn Mo monroe thermometer and i got some paper dolls and i and i still haven't listed that ukuline uh you know, I've got some more of these telephone ringers, and it's just a mixed bag of crap. Um, crap that I like selling. Crap that other people like buying. So, i got to get down on that. Uh, I'm going to make this, uh, hey, you know, everybody be profitable. Don't overlook crap. If it looks like crap, and you can strip it down for parts, do it. Start collecting those parts. And, you know, as long as they're parts, they, they shouldn't take up much space. So, you know, and then you sell the lots off. It's a good way to make money. Hey, everybody be profitable. And ta-ta for now.